As many of you know, I just relocated from Los Angeles to New York City. My personal nightmare was trying to figure out how to move 1,500 records across the country without damaging them and going into crazy debt. Well, I am nearly settled in my new spot, and I can tell you with confidence, they all made it. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I did it. Stick around. So let's go step by step. If you're moving a short distance, this obviously won't be as big of a deal as a cross-country move. I can't even imagine a cross-continental move, but that's another video for another person. In this video, I can tell you, at least for the USA, the specifics will really help you out moving within the country. Outside of the USA, you can probably take these ideas and find something similar in your country. But let me tell you what I did. First things first, the most important part of the move is you gotta pack your records correctly. So there's probably many boxes that can hold records. However, hands down, the best box to hold records is a small U-Haul box. So U-Haul sells these boxes in bundles of 25. They are perfect to fit records. They're just a little more than 12 inches by 12 inches, which means they hold LPs perfectly. And if you don't use all 25, you can return the ones that you don't use, which is great. I think they come down to less than a buck a piece. Awesome deal. You wanna make sure you put the LPs snugly and they're going this way, not stacked like this. Depending on the records in the box, depending on if you keep your discs outside the jacket, depending on if there's a lot of gate folds or triple LPs, you'll get somewhere between 60 and 80 LPs in the box. Now, you don't want these to be moving back and forth, which is why you wanna have it wall to wall, super snug, because if they're moving back and forth, they might go up and down, and you might start seeing some seam splits, which is not a good idea. Now you can always more or less avoid that by taking the records out of the jacket and putting it in the outer sleeve behind the jacket. That's actually gonna add double the width. So you have to realize if you're moving a lot of records, first of all, huge pain in the butt to do. But second of all, it's going to add more boxes. So you gotta pick your battles. The records can have a very slight give when you run your hands over the top. They can move a little bit back to back. You don't want them so tight they're gonna start crushing each other and causing ring wear. But ultimately, you want them to be really secure and not moving so when the boxes jiggle, the records don't really move with it. To put it simply, keep them upright and tight. All right, so here's what I did with my move. So the first thing I did was I took my 10 rarest records, the holiest of holy grails, and I brought them with me on a plane to a trip to the city before I moved. This was the only thing I trusted these with. The bag must have been worth a couple thousand dollars, so I didn't want to send them in the mail and have anything happen to these irreplaceable records. I brought them to New York on the plane as my personal item, left them at a friend's place. They were safe until the move. If you have anything super rare, I would say this is probably the best bet. Just take it yourself, whether it's in your car or on the plane. But then I had another 50 or so grails, pretty much that whole first page on a Discogs page of your rarest records when you sort by value. And I didn't really wanna send those either. So what I did with those, I actually separated them into two. So I took the discs and I put them in these mailers that I found that were supposed to hold between 15 and 20 records. I stacked the discs up and I put bubble wrap around it. I took those and I actually know a flight attendant who was able to take the records with her on the flight, which was incredible, making sure they were protected and that they made it across without any kind of heat issues or light issues. As for the jackets, I put them in also the same boxes. I stacked them up and at the very top, I put some worthless record because then I could ship it media mail. A little sneaky, but it's not lying. It is media. I then started boxing my entire collection, as I mentioned before, which was very time consuming, very stressful. I tried to keep them in order based on their alphabetization and all the genres, and it didn't work out that well. So I had to kind of redo everything when I put them back in the shelves, which was a whole nother thing, but eventually it was fine. By the time I finished boxing everything in the shelves, I had about 20 to 23 boxes full of records. So the question now for this video is how do they get across the country? Well, here comes U-Ship. U-Ship is a site that was recommended to me where basically you put what your cargo is and independent movers and contracted movers will reach out to you and bid on what it would cost for them to move your thing whatever distance to whatever distance. It's an interesting site and your mileage may vary with who you get and what they charge, but I got extremely lucky. I got a guy who understood that records were fragile. He understood they had to be out of direct sunlight. He had a windowless cargo van. I'm talking a massive cargo van. He was driving across the country, actually perfectly from LA to New Jersey, and he said he would run the AC the whole time, gun it over there. I said, yeah, that's exactly what I want. He was great, I got to track him the entire way, and his price was amazing. It was less than what it would have cost me to use a mover that might have just thrown the boxes in with a bunch of other people's stuff, with risks of the boxes getting crushed, with things that are falling. It's just not worth it. This way, you have a little more security that what you're moving is gonna be treated properly. And this is where I'm gonna say something very important. 
A lot of people think that records need to be babied, that they're so fragile and precious, and yes, you do need to take care of them, and yes, they are fragile, but possibly not as fragile as we all may think. So what I've learned in this process is that records don't warp as easily as we may believe that they do. A couple summers ago in LA, there was a day that was 111 degrees. Yeah, it was terrible. And all my records were in my room and there was no AC in the room at that time. I thought, oh, my whole collection is toast. Pun intended. But you know what? They all survived. So it isn't high temperatures that warps a record. It's two things. First is a rapid fluctuation in temperature. If it goes from very cold to extremely hot in a short time span, that's gonna cause some of the material to start warping. But the number one culprit that warps records is direct sunlight. Direct sunlight will turn a record into a potato chip faster than you could eat a potato chip. I wouldn't recommend putting records in direct sunlight ever. That includes when you're storing them in your home and when you're moving them across the country. So the windowless cargo van was definitely the move. It was at that point I realized that I had forgotten a couple records when I gave them all to the guy to send. There were a couple boxes in my closet, a couple hundred records in my closet that I forgot to box and give to him. That's what happens when you have too many records. You just forget you have them all over the place. So at that point, I needed to figure out what my move was to get all those extra records across the country. Well, this became a little chaotic and expensive. I was sending stuff media mail to my dad in various size packages as fast as I could, as often as I could, but about a week and a half until my move, I was still stuck with roughly 150 records, nothing too rare, but stuff I wanted to keep. And I was like, all right, what do I do? How do I get these over? This is way too many to send piece by piece. So I threw up a Hail Mary. What I did was I filled three small U-Haul boxes, as I mentioned before, tight and upright, and then I put those boxes inside of a medium-sized U-Haul box, bubble wrap that, and then I just sent a media mail and crossed my fingers. It was a little risky, I'm not gonna lie, but pretty affordable. Each box was about 25, 30 bucks uninsured. I just really trusted the USPS and they all got there. Now there's a weight limit of 75 pounds for media mail. Luckily this was under, so it was affordable. Took a little bit of time, but it got there. The outer boxes, absolutely trashed, but the boxes that were holding the records, pristine. I didn't forget about seven inch and 10 inch records too. That is a little tricky as well. I basically had to find mailers that were, I don't know, holding 10 to 15 each of the 10 and seven inches respectively. Just loaded them up, sent them off. I probably sent 15 boxes of seven inches and three boxes of 10 inches. It is not pretty, but it's what you gotta do. When it comes to insurance for these packages, I would insure anything over a hundred dollars. Insurance with the USPS does not actually cover damage inside because they can't really prove it was damaged before you sent it. All it really covers is lost packages. So anything over $100, I'd say insure it. Why not? You don't want a package to go lost and have no recourse. So that's how I moved 1,500 records across the country and they were unscathed. It was somewhat expensive, cumbersome, extremely tiring, but you know what? Efficient. And if you follow this guide and tailor it to your specific scenario, I guarantee you'll make it across your trip just fine. If you have any questions about this process, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please make sure you like it and you're subscribed to Too Many Records. There are a lot of incredible videos coming your way. Have that notification bell turned on so you don't miss out on any cool stuff I put out. My room tour is coming soon. Just waiting on one final thing and then you're going to see this place in all its glory. Thanks for watching guys. More videos soon. Take it easy.